keep telling me I just doing what we got to do you know we we just you know we happened to, to put things together in a, in a way that that got a lot of attention I mean the issue of, of housing and people being kicked out of their homes needed to have a lot of attention brought to it and we picked a unique way to, to do that so May 2nd we locked ourselves in that was midnight that night I was supposed to be out of the house I've been living in the house for 20 years making payments for 10 years and Paid over 40 grand to the bank, and uh, and four months behind, and they want to take it away from me. And I, I thought that was very, very unfair. I've been mostly in factory work, auto factory uh, jobs for for years. Repetitive strain injuries where I have osteoarthritis. I have no joints left in my wrist and and, and my thumb, and so I've had to have a couple of surgeries and was was off work, uh, you know, on. Um, not like state disability, but through my insurance company disability, and not only making half of what I was making. The bank had promised to work with me, you know, uh, to do a loan modification or some type of program, and they uh, basically never, never came up with anything until I got my registered letter saying I had 30 days to get four months payments behind. It came to the point where we had to put our money where our mouth was, you know. So we decided I'm going to lose my home anyway, let's use it to make a stand. We did about, I don't know, I think it was over six months of planning, barricading, uh, building cement block walls uh, for, for doorways and uh, we, we made, uh, you know, provisions for, for generators. We know we had a generator to, for backups in case they did pull electric. We started the Toledo Foreclosure Defense League. And, and during the time as it was leading up to my eviction, we spoke with a lot of folks who were, who were being evicted out of their homes. We offered to stand with them, you know, to help defend their homes, but people were afraid of, of what would happen if they got uh, arrested, that it could hurt their chances of getting jobs, you know, to, to make their payments, you know, wage slave problems that come from that. We joined forces with uh, the moratorium now um, people in, in Detroit, and we also um, became a, a, a local action group to take back the land as well. We actually called the sheriff while we were inside. We told him, uh, you know, we're not moving out. We're, we're not moving till you guys form uh, or, or declare a moratorium, and uh, or you're going to have to drag us out. We wanted to be global. We wanted it to be um, very. Uh, uh, we, we wanted a lot of attention to it. We stayed there and. and and made the whole thing go viral, you know, um, through the internet uh, connections and the live feed that we had. They actually used a cable cutter and came in and opened up the, the box and cut the cables to the electric. And then, I guess using um, uh, extra heavy duty jumper cables and super glue, uh, power was restored back to the house, so we ended up with, uh, you know, still being able to broadcast for a couple of days after that. We got all sorts of support from from people around me that I didn't even know, neighbors that were around me. We had a neighbor two doors down that raised the Jolly Roger uh, uh, you know, flag outside their house. People were dropping off water. Um, we had a two inch hole in the, in the front window. People were feeding us food through the window. Tamales and burritos fit real great. So we actually did interviews through the little hole in the window. We had a, we had a crew outside, our, our, our tech crew, that actually spent their time outside connected to the internet, getting to, to blogs, to indie media outlets, and, and getting the attention out there, because the local media at first hardly covered it. But through our people flooding the internet with what was going on, it started getting national attention. And then, of course, then all the media from Toledo started coming out because they didn't want to be scooped by people hundred, you know, 500 miles away. Well, on uh, the morning of uh, May 7th, um, we were awoken by uh, breaking glass and, and, and pounding. It was all around the house. They were, they were trying to come in through every possible entry into the house. We had, we had practiced a couple of times, you know, of getting ready. We, we wore our chains on our wrists uh, all the time while we were in there. So with our, with our carabiner clips that we were hooking to our lock boxes, when they, when they come in with their guns pointed and they're, you know, down on the floor, down on the... And then we were, we were already down on the floor. We were, we were locked down. So they were kind of, they were all looking around at each other like, uh, okay, what do we do? You know, uh, they're, they're not doing anything, you know. I was laying on the floor with my arms still in the lockbox underneath the American flag. And 
person by person, lockbox by lockbox, the five of us had to be extracted and they had brought three contractors in. They went through I don't know how many um, batteries through their uh, cordless uh, drills and saws and uh, you know to, to, to cut us out and then finally about an hour and a half later I was the last one uh, taken out of the house. We are uh, an anarchist group. And we did not want to, to hide our politics. We're against repression, and we think that people have to stand up from the grassroots level. We can't depend on, 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 on a lot of these national organizations, liberal organizations, to, um, to just work through the system to get reforms, that, that the people have to take their communities back, and we can figure out how to leave. Uh, how to how to live and, 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 and work in our communities without government operations telling us how to how to do things. We've gotten a lot of uh, a lot of good response from people. A lot of people saying afterwards, like, uh, "Sorry, we didn't come down." <laughs> the people that are in the corporate corporate bureaucracy of the of the of the unions, you know, they they like their cozy positions and and don't want to. Um, uh, I guess to mess with that, you know, jobs with justice wouldn't wouldn't join us in Toledo. Uh, they said, well, you can't control a bunch of anarchists, you know, afraid that they were going to get into fights with the cops or whatever. But we had individual workers who were who were right there with us and supporting us. They came out um, and uh, and held signs and supported us at the action. Uh, you know, the, the, the Toledo Foreclosure Defense League was initially supposed to be a coalition and nobody would join us because of our politics. And they released us on an OR bond, you know, they didn't uh, make us pay any bail money because I think they're just really afraid of, you know, being seen as being totally rotten to a person getting thrown out of their home. A reporter talked to a bank official that it came that day and asked them if they were afraid of this kind of thing spreading and the banker said absolutely you know and that's I mean that was one of the one of the reasons we we, we, we want to scare the you know the hell out of uh, corporate America and and we wanted to inspire people to do similar actions and and spark people uh, to stand up and fight back. They actually gave back the American flag and they folded it up nice and pretty, you know, the, the triangle form. And so we're we're wanting to, to take that take that triangle flag, put it in the in the wooden the wooden plaque and then put the picture of me under the flag in the lockbox, you know, and put it together as a you know, a symbol of what America's really like.